हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय प्लेलिस्ट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी जो हम लेविनसन लेंज पब्लिकेशन से कर रहे हैं चैप्टर नंबर नाइन आज कवर करेंगे वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर व्हिच टॉक्स अबाउट लेबोरेटरी डायग्नोसिस ऑब्वियसली द लेबोरेटरी डायग्नोसिस ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी विल बी कवर्ड हेयर आई मस्ट टेल यू एट द वेरी आउटसाइड दैट जनरली जो हम पेशेंट देख रहे होते हैं सो वॉट वी यूजली डू इज वी सेंड द पेशेंट सैम्पल इन वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग फाइव कैटेगरीज ऑफ लेबोरेटरीज एक लेबोरेटरी जिसको हम यूजली कहते हैं केमिकल पैथोलॉजी दिस इज द लेबोरेटरी विच यूजली टेस्ट फॉर योर से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स एंड केमिस्ट्री पैरामीटर्स सच एज अ लॉर ऑफ मार्कर्स इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स यूरिया सोडियम पोटेशियम एंड ऑल दो सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग एच बी ए वन सी ग्लूकोज सो ऑल दो केमिस्ट्री थिंग्स केमिकल पैथोलॉजी there is another laboratory which is what we call the hematology so this is the uh, blood related cbc and esr and all those sort of thing then we have uh, a very important lab which is called histopathology and this is where you uh, do the diagnostics for tissues including the cancer diagnostics then we have obviously the microbiology laboratory or microbiology lab mein use hone wale kafi sare test aaj hum discuss bhi karenge and then a very recent emerging laboratory in many parts of the world is the molecular lab so molecular pathology these are usually the five classified disciplines in pathology jahan hum patient ke samples bhejte hain so either the sample is going blood sample bhej rahe hain for chemical pathology analysis or hematology analysis or histopath ke liye tissue bhej rahe hain ya microbiology ke liye samples bhej rahe hain these samples can be blood it can be sputum it can be pus anything we'll discuss in this chapter about micro in more detail and then we have the molecular diagnostics okay now molecular is kind of touching all different domains for example bahut sare hematological disorders such as thalassemias and certain heme malignancies they are actually diagnosed by molecular studies similarly bahut sare microorganisms ki diagnostics ke liye molecular pathology ki lab is very very important uh, recent example jo puri duniya mein isne utpad machaya tha the covid covid ki diagnostics pcr ke through ho rahi thi na and that pcr was usually done in a molecular biology lab so that's the overview of the laboratory diagnostic domain so today's chapter is obviously going to focus on the clinical microbiology laboratories they play a fundamental and indispensable role in providing reliable and timely information regarding the identification of infectious disease agent obviously clinicians use this information not only to make or confirm the diagnosis but also to guide uh, the clinical decisions and the treatment because it also tells you ki if a organism so say for example if this is a patient is patient ko फिंगर पे यहाँ पे पस है एंड दैट पस इज ऑब्वियसली कंटेनिंग अ लॉर ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम एंड सेल्स विच आर डेड एंड ये सारा पस आप लैब भेजते हैं लैब में इसकी पूरी एनालिसिस होती है एंड वॉट यू गेट बैक इज द कल्चर एंड सेंसिटिविटी रिपोर्ट सो द रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम द माइक्रोबायोलॉजी लैब नॉट ओनली टेल्स यू कि ये फॉर एग्जाम्पल इसमें स्टैफ ओरियस है इट ऑल्सो टेल्स यू इफ दिस स्टैफ ओरियस इज रेजिस्टेंट टू अ पर्टिकुलर ड्रग और इज इट सेंसिटिव टू अ पर्टिकुलर ड्रग इफ इट इज सेंसिटिव टू अ पर्टिकुलर ड्रग यू स्टार्ट गिविंग दिस एंटीबायोटिक एंड दिस एंटीबायोटिक वर्स अगेंस्ट दी ऑर्गेनिज्म सो दिस माइक्रोबायोलॉजी लैब इज प्लेइंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल नॉट ओनली इन द डायग्नोस्टिक्स बट ऑल्सो इन मैनेजिंग द पेशेंट्स since specimen selection and collection are typically the responsibility of the medical staff clinicians should number 1 understand the pathogenesis of the infection and number 2 ensure the integrity of the specimen aksar students jo mbbs wale hote hain they think ke yaar ye sample aur ye lab web ye hamara kaam nahi hai but believe me or not this is very important to know exactly how the pathological laboratories work because if you don't know for example ke uh, kis tube mein there is a tube called edta tube ye tube hai jisme edta hota hai isme kaun se test ke liye sample hum collect karna hai then there is a tube which is uh, um, some other tube a purple top tube uh, jiska main zikr kar raha hu then there is a yellow top tube then there is a red top tube a black top tube so in tubes ke thakkan basically inke tops alag alag hote hain aur har ट्यूब डेजिग्नेटेड है एक पर्टिकुलर टेस्ट के लिए अब अगर आपको करवाना है से फॉर एग्जांपल सीबीसी और आप गलत ट्यूब में भेज दें रिजल्ट्स विल बी अफेक्टेड अगर आपने रैंडम ब्लड शुगर देखना है या एच बी ए वन सी देखना है तो उसके लिए स्पेसिफिक ट्यूब है जिसमें आपको ब्लड सो इफ यू आर अ क्लिनिशियन एंड इफ यू आर अ इंटर्न और हाउस ऑफिसर वर्किंग इन अ हॉस्पिटल एंड यू डोंट नो हाउ टू कलेक्ट द सैम्पल देन यू विल बी इन अ बिग ट्रबल एट डायग्नोस्टिक माइक्रोबायोलॉजी टेस्टिंग बिकम्स मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स क्लियर कम्युनिकेशन एंड स्ट्रॉग पार्ट दिस इज ऑल फिलोसफिकल ट्रेडिशनली डायग्नोसिस हैज रिलाइड ऑन कल्चर microscopy and phenotypic characterization of the organism so this is the traditional bit okay 
बट नाउ देर आर रिसेंट एडवांसेस नाउ देर आर सो मेनी एडवांसेस जिसमें पेशेंट के सीरम में हम चेक करते हैं कि कौन सा ऑर्गेनिज्म है या फिर मोलिकुलर बायोलॉजी या इवन जीनोमिक्स स्टडीज हम करते हैं सो so, पहले ये होता था किसी जमाने में कि ऑलवेज फ्रॉम द पेशेंट यू टेक द सैम्पल यू ग्रो दर्गेनिज्म इन द माइक्रो बायोलॉजी लैब एंड देन यू सी इट अंडर द माइक्रोस्कोप विद योर नेकेट आई टू सी हाउ इज द मार्फोलॉजी लुकिंग लाइक दैट थिंग इज नाउ शिफ्टिंग because now what you do is if you know this is a patient if you are expecting a microorganism this microorganism will release some molecules in the blood you can simply take the blood and test for that biomarker what you can also do so this is what we call serology so you can do serology what you can also do is you can extract the organism take the dna or rna out of the organism and just simply sequence it iski sequencing se aapko pata lag jayega number 1 which type of organism it is number 2 is it resistant to particular drugs or sensitive so now the diagnostic things are changing therefore ye jo typical traditional way tha culture karo microscopy karo that is now changing to more serology and molecular biology and genomics okay so microscopic examination obviously if the specimen is collected from a sterile uh, body site that does not harbor any background normal flora a sample of the specimen can be prepared for microscopic examination using an appropriate staining method such as gram stain or acid fast so what you are doing here is say for example ek patient hai us patient ko meningitis ke symptoms hai and you have done a lumbar puncture aur wo lumbar puncture ka sample ab aapke paas lab mein aa gaya so what you do is uh, try to gram stain the organism the first thing to classify if this is gram positive or negative then you see under the microscope the morphology if they are uh, rounded cocci or rods what is their shape so based on these parameters you identify ki which organism is causing the um, you know the, the trouble basically so that is all done on the basis of microscopy for which you do a lot of staining okay you use stains gram stains or some other stains then there are culture based methods so you try to and that's uh, very true for bacterial and fungal infections you try to grow the organisms and for this you use different media so if this is a plate a uh, petri dish or isme maine koi media dala hua hai this media is uh, composed composed of a lot of different compounds so for example uh, there are so many different types of media by the way and we'll talk about them so for example if it's a blood agar plate it will be a different sort of medium so iske components alag alag honge if it's a levinson johnson medium iske components alag honge so this is a very important information ke kis organism ki growth hum expect kar rahe hain usko us medium plate par grow kare so if you are doing this this is called the culture method you are trying to grow the organism so once the organisms are grown then you can pick up the colonies and do whatever you would like to do and uh, you do this routinely for bacteria and fungi but you can also do this for viruses but viral culture requires a special bio safety laboratories so you need high bsl facility containment facilities taki virus spread na ho jaye i mean imagine if you are handling with rabies virus or if you are uh, handling with covid virus and you want to grow this that's a dangerous dangerous thing okay media can be selective now ye media ka matlab ye hai jo media is plate mein dala hai humne grow karne ke liye the containing compounds that allow only certain bacteria to grow uh, so you use different antibiotics different salts different dyes so if i use a, a particular antibiotic a only an organism b can grow because a will inhibit anything else that sort of story okay so these are very very um, स्पेसिफिक मीडिया ना दीज आर मीडिया कहें या उसको एगर कहें इज द सेम थिंग सो मीडिया इज काइंड ऑफ अ लिक्विड थिंग एंड वंस इट इज सॉलिडिफाइड इन द प्लेट दिस इज वॉट इज द वर्ड दैट वी यूज एगर देर इज ब्लैर एगर एंड देर सो मेनी डिफरेंट मीडिया विच आर मैंशन हेयर मै कहान की टेलेराइट थायर मार्टन टी एस आई लवेंसन जैनसन um there is eosin methylene blue egg yolk these are all uh, actually itne zyada bhi nahi hai 10 11 hi hain you should remember all the names and each one is specific for a particular organism aur phir uska ek particular function uske sath so whole this table is very important so for example if you talk about blood agar it uh, uh, it gives a, a lot of bacteria to grow on blood agar and it basically detect hemolysis which is important to classify the organisms into alpha hemolytic pattern or beta hemolytic patterns and by by this virtue we know that which particular organism we are talking about then for example there is a chocolate agar which is very good for growing these organisms and heating the blood inactivates the inhibitors of the growth is a very so basically you heat the blood make the chocolate agar and uh, you get these organisms grow there 
Then we have uh, simply egg yolk, which is very good medium for Clostridium perfringens, and Lovens and Jensen is particularly for micro. So exam me ye bahut puchte hain ki acha ye batao TB ko agar grow karna hai, what is a good medium for that? Agar Cordybacterium diphtheria ko uh, grow karna hai laboratory me, what is a good medium for that? So Telluride, for example, okay, and Gram-negative rods, particularly from your gut TSI. So these are this is uh, a super high yield table, and I recommend. that you spend some time on the table remembering them okay in modern clinical microbiology labs the process of cultivation has improved upon substantially with the development of introduction of the novel nylon flocked swabs and accompanying transport container so basically again philosophical debate uh, concrete information main aapko deta ja raha hu ek technique maine aapko batayi jo microbiology labs mein bahut zyada use hoti hai that is the microscopic examination the other one was the culture based technique you try to grow the organism now the third technique that you should know particularly is the blood culture so you take the blood out of your patient and you try to culture what is present in the blood so that's very commonly done in persons who are coming in the clinics with uh, you know fever and things like that so blood cultures are performed most often when sepsis endocarditis osteomyelitis see these are all infections so you take the blood you try to grow the organism for blood cultures the site of any puncture is first cleaned kyunki imagine kare na ye kisi ka hath hai aur yahan se aapne blood lena hai aur sir पे कोई ऑर्गेनिज्म है और वो आपके ब्लड बॉटल में आ गया और अब आप जाके इसको ग्रो कर रहे हैं तो ग्रोथ आ रही है वो ग्रोथ एक्चुअली पेशेंट के ब्लड से नहीं आई बल्कि स्किन साइड से आई सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू क्लीन दैट एरिया सो दैट देयर इज नो कंटेमिनेशन ओके ब्लड ऑप्टेन इज एडेड टू रिच ग्रोथ मीडियम इन अ बॉटल दैट कंटेन्स इंडिकेटर फॉर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड प्रोडक्शन क्योंकि अगर बॉटल में आपने ऑर्गेनिज्म ले लिया इट विल ऑब्वियसली परफॉर्म रेस्पिरेशन एंड प्रोड्यूस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सो उसके लिए इंडिकेटर डालते हैं स्टैंडर्ड प्रैक्टिस इज टू टेक टेन इनॉकले टेन एम एल्स ऑफ ब्लड इन टू टू बॉटल्स पर कल्चर सेट सो दैट्स टू मच डिटेल यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेम्बर हाउ टेक्निकली इट इज डन बट रिमेम्बर ब्लड कल्चर इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट टेक्निक वी यूज इन द माइक्रो बायोलॉजी लैब दैन ऑब्वियसली थ्रॉट कल्चर दिस इज एज द नेम इंडिकेट इज टेकन फ्रॉम द थ्रॉट सो इफ समबडी हैज फेरेंजाइटस फॉर एग्जाम्पल एंड यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग फ्यू बीटा हिमोलिटिक स्ट्रैप्स यू डू थ्रॉट कल्चर यू पुट अ स्वैप इन द माउथ आज द पेशेंट टू से आर एंड यू पुट अ स्वैप बैक देयर एंड देन टेक द स्वैप एंड टेक द सैम्पल you can also uh, i mean as i told you uh, besides doing cultures you can go for dna sequencing okay now whether the specimen is being obtained uh, for plate culture which is where you use the plate and grow the organism uh, there is also a point of care testing available so point of care testing basically gives you result there and then so if the patient is lying on a bed and the patient is there there is a very mobile machine just like a glucometer like you measure your blood glucose levels you take the sample put in the machine in a few minutes you get the result um, so these are being done other techniques which are being which are being uh, not routinely performed but they can be performed are high tech uh, techniques to identify the organism at the multi top abhi thodi der mein iski hum baat karte hain right then sputum cultures can be done obviously culture kisi bhi jagah se ho sakta hai aapki ungli pe agar pus hai iska culture ho sakta hai throat mein pus hai uska culture ho sakta hai uh, sputum kisi ko agar respiratory tract infection hai such as uh, tuberculosis such as pneumonia you can take this sputum and try to grow the organisms present in there okay so that's uh, or jab bhi aap culture karte hain ultimately you pick up so if you are growing some organism here so the colony is here you pick up the organism you do the gram staining you see under the microscope you can do the sequencing so basically you are amplifying the bacteria which was present initially in the culture okay then the cerebrospinal fluid culture so patients with meningitis for example meningoencephalitis all these uh, cases you get the csf and csf can be cultured i told you urine can be cultured stool can be cultured so this should not be a surprise to you that all these details written here obviously i am not going into the details of the paragraph and the organisms at the moment because my focus is to tell you about the microbiological techniques which we use in obviously the uh, microbiological laboratory so jab hum infections padhenge when we do the urine infection utis for example we'll talk about all these um, uh, infectious organisms and their mode of presentation and the treatments but for now just giving you an idea that uh, for culturing you can have any uh, i mean sample for example stool cultures this is where you uh, take the sample which is stool and you try to grow the organisms out of the stool 
Okay, it can be so many organisms that you can aim for Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter, E. coli, O1 food. So all of them targeting basically the GI tract. So this detail I'm omitting for now because organisms is not the part here. It's just to give you an idea how does the microbiology laboratory basically works. Okay, then urine can be cultured. Obviously, if you are talking about UTI, you can culture the urine right um one thing is students uh, quite a lot ask me about the uh, the specific uh, technical details of the test that we do in the laboratory these are not tested so you don't have to worry about them okay so they are not tested usually in your mbbs exams uh, neither are they tested in your professional exams such as usmle or mrcp so these details are not relevant for you genital tract culture so um one can also think about a lot of sexually transmitted diseases, for example, nizarias, okay, gonorrhea, or uh, there can be uh, some other sort of, sort of chlamydia infections, for example. They can all be tested by performing uh, genital tract cultures. So the basic mode of doing cultures is to take the sample. So if I'm um, again and again, so if this is a scrotum, for example, and there is a scrotal uh, abscess, you just take the sample in a swab, which is basically a plastic with a cotton at the top. You take it, transfer it into a tube or a bottle, and then grow the organism in the plate in the laboratory. And then with the growth organism, you can uh, do the gram staining or you can do the sequencing or molecular biology testes testing okay now wound and abscess cultures again so this is just to elaborate so many things um, basically what are the microbiological techniques the microbiological techniques include microscopic examination and culture examination now culture examination can be anything it can be csf culture it can be stool culture it can be urine culture it can be i mean whatever so whatever fluid you uh, give to a microbiology laboratory they can grow the organism and they can culture it including the wounds and abscesses okay so that is then a new category which is called the serologic method so basically serological methods means there are organisms which produce something which then circulate in the body and if you take the blood of the patient you can detect those some things okay now these methods already uh, discussed in chapter 64 but we'll do it some point it is of interest to present information on how serologic reaction aid to the microbiological diagnosis. There are two basic approaches. Number one, using known antibody to identify the microorganism and then using known antigens to detect the antibodies in the patient's serum. The way it works is, this is a patient, for example, and this is the bacteria. So bacteria will have some sort of antigens attached to it, just give it as a pathogenicity hogi. To these antigens, we produce antibodies and this antibody will be in the blood. So if you can detect the antibody, you can detect which organism body in the So that is the theory behind detection of antibodies in the patient's serum. The other technique is using the antibody to identify the microorganism. So if you have an antibody already in place, what you can do is take patient's blood out and there will be an antigen in this patient's blood. And then in the uh, microbiology lab, you put an antibody which binds to it. And if it binds to the antigen, you can detect the binding by so many different techniques, such as spectrophotometry or there are other techniques available. But you've got to know that which antigen body can be So either you detect the antibody, which is made by uh, the humans, which means the patients, or you detect the antigen, which is taken out of the blood, and then you test it with the known antibody. So these are different approaches that we use routinely do in the microbiology lab uh, slight agglutination test is something that you should know antisera can be antisera means the antibodies can be used to identify salmonella shigella by causing agglutination of the known organism so if you use so say for example if i have a plate here and there are salmonella and shigella they will have their specific antibodies if you use antibodies against these antigens they will make clumps so this is how you this is called agglutination you identify these organisms are present there then there is a latex agglutination test latex speech coated with a specific antibody are agglutinated by a particular antigen so the idea is always that the antigen will bind with relevant antibody and if they bind they will be clumping um uh, elisa is the same technique enzyme linked immunosorbent assay so what you do is basically there is antigen a specific antigen from the patient's body because the antigen bacteria and then you try to put antibodies over here if the antibodies bind you can quantify that and once you quantify that you can tell case okay, patient may antigen t and that was the amount 
okay fluorescent antibody test some of the antibodies are fluorescent so they have a fluorescent molecule attached here so once there is an antigen antibody binding you see everything green or, or whatever color you like okay and then I told you, you can also identify the antibodies within the patient's body, which are made in response to the antigens, okay? So, uh, typical example here, serologic testing for syphilis, we detect the antibodies. So, the detection of antibody in the patient's serum is frequently used to diagnose syphilis because treponema pallidum does not grow on a laboratory media. Important point. So, you can't do culture here. It's a difficult thing. There are two kinds of tests available. Number one is uh, the non-treponemal test, which uses a cardiolipin lecithin cholesterol mixture as an antigen, not an antigen of the organism. So, it's not a pure antigen from the organism. It's an artificial antigen. Cardiolipin is a lipid extracted from the beef heart. And uh, what happens is clumping of the cardiolipin occurs in the presence of the antibody induced by the treponema pallidum infection. So, basically, if this is the patient, the patient is infected with treponema pallidum, so there will be antigen hogi, uske against your body. Ne antibody bana li hogi. Ab ye antibody has your blood nikal liya, aur is dish mein ek artificial antigen dal di aur wo antigen bilkul mimic karti hai treponema pallidum ki antigen ko and if this antibody reacts here there will be clumping and you would know that this patient's blood did have antibodies which were produced because of the antigen which was released by treponema pallidum so that's a long story but rewind the video if you don't understand and then there is a treponemal test antigen where um, treponema pallidum ki antigen use ki jati hai for detection. That's the only difference. The bottom line is reaction of antigen plus antibody. Okay. Then there is another term called cold agglutinin test. Patients with mycoplasma pneumonia particularly develop autoimmune antibodies that agglutinate human red blood cells at lower temperature. And if this happens, you are pretty sure that you have mycoplasma infection in the body. And with this, we move towards the last uh, segment of this particular chapter, which includes the very recent advances, including the molecular diagnostics and the genomic testing. So when we say the molecular diagnostic, that basically means the PCR reactions. So again, see, if you are growing in an organism, you have an option to either stain it and see it under the microscope. And then the other option is you take the nucleic acids from that organism, either DNA or RNA, and then you try to do PCR and see which specific organism is present. So that's called a molecular biology technique. And further taking it away from, uh, you know, simple PCR to more sequencing based methods, and this is uh, becoming very, very famous these days. So we have like next generation sequencing platforms available. We have Sanger sequencing platforms routinely being used in the laboratory. So you can simply sequence uh, complete nucleic acid. It will not only tell you the, you know, classification, stratification, taxonomical classification of the microorganism, but will also tell you if there are susceptibility to a particular drug or resistance to a particular drug. So it's very, very important information. Okay, um, so that's one testing. One more word, I have to It's called the NAT test, the nucleic acid test, and it uh, has to be for sure done, particularly in patients who are, you know, uh, going to receive blood. Uh, for any transplantation purposes so in the laboratory where they make the blood uh, in the packets which is called the blood bank so blood bank mein jo blood pool kiya ja rahe hai, ya blood products pool kiya ja rahe hai, they have to be free of the nucleic acids no nucleic acids should be there because if there are nucleic acids it means they have infectious organisms so it should be free so nucleic acid testing is done as an FDA approved test in many of the centers these days okay but I gave you the basic idea that what you can do is you can do all the sequence analysis and identify uh, what sort of organism is there what are the details what are the resistance and sensitivity profile of these organisms and then uh, there is a proteomic test which focuses more so for example the molecular diagnostic method and the genomic testing method they focus on either DNA or RNA so which is what we call the uh, nucleic acid focus but when we talk about the proteomics they basically focus on the protein uh, structures and the protein assemblies so molecular uh, proteomic platforms have also been developed where the whole protein you know interface of the organism and the humans can be identified by mass spectrometry so you multi world we'll talk about it later so multi is uh, 
a technology basically which measures particles based on their mass to charge ratio so basically it identify the whole proteome of the person so this is also being used not very routinely used it's a very expensive technique but that's out there okay so with this uh, i think i gave you glimpses of uh, how does a microbiology laboratory work these days okay it starts with the conventional microscopy and staining and then it goes all the way to the ngs which is the sequencing and the pcr which is the recent uh, molecular uh, updates available in the field of microbiology okay so that's all for this uh, chapter and i will see you in another chapter please do share the video subscribe the channel my name is dr asif qureshi and you are watching dr asif lectures